Hello everyone and welcome back to the Airfix YouTube channel. In this video we're going to be building and painting this 1 to 400 scale starter set of the amazing Tudor warship the Mary Rose. The Mary Rose had a 33 year career in the Tudor Navy serving in several wars before sinking in combat in 1545 taking with her the lives of many of those serving on board. In 1982 the well-preserved remains of the Mary Rose were brought back to the surface and placed on display in the Mary Rose Museum in Portsmouth, along with many of the incredible artefacts that were recovered with the ship. This 1 400th scale starter set includes the kit, a tube of poly cement, a paintbrush and four Humbrol acrylic paints. On the back of the box you'll find an actual size colour profile of the ship, which details the placement of all of the markings, as well as the colour callouts for the four included paints. Inside the box you'll find the kit on three sprues of light grey injection moulded styrene. In the small bag you'll find the tube of Humbrol poly cement and the four acrylic paints to paint the kit. There's the ubiquitous Humbrol Airfix starter set brush and a sheet of markings which cover all of the intricate and colourful patterns that were applied to the ship. As well as this there's also a small printed sticker sheet which details the pennant and the flag. As always you have the instruction guide which details the construction process from start to finish and you should read this before you begin and follow the steps in the correct sequence. We've covered the use of the starter set cement many times in our recent videos using the kit box to create an applicator, so in this video we've decided to use a tube of Humbrol's precision poly cement instead which has this needle like applicator built into the tube. This allows for careful and neat application of the glue without the need to create an applicator. We're also going to be using Humbrol's acrylic spray primer in this video to prepare the surface of the model to receive the base coats of paint and to apply the paint we're also going to use some of these flat brushes again from Humbrol to allow for smoother faster coverage of the larger areas. If you're new to building models you'll find all of the kit parts are moulded on these frames which are sometimes referred to as sprues. As well as being essential for injection moulding they also help to organise the parts and you'll find that each frame is lettered on the long tab in the corner and next to each part you'll find the part numbers moulded into the smaller tabs and these correspond to the part numbers which are called out in the instructions. The letter refers to the frame and the number refers to the parts. When you've located the parts that you need for the first step in the instructions, they need to be removed from the sprue, and we're doing this using a pair of cutters from the Humbrol Starter toolset. You'll note that we're cutting a little ways away from the part to avoid damaging the surface, and then those small pieces of plastic can be trimmed away with a modelling knife. Once those excess pieces of plastic are cut away with the knife, we can clean up the surface using a modelling file to ensure that no excess plastic is left behind. This process is basic model part cleanup and just ensures that there's no interference between the kit parts that would prevent them from fitting in the way they're intended. The precision poly cement is applied simply by squeezing the tube, allowing the glue to travel down the needle applicator. Using this applicator we're able to focus the glue along the inner edges of the join so it doesn't squeeze out when the two parts are pressed together. Poly cement works by melting the plastic together so you do have 3 or 4 seconds to ensure perfect positioning before the glue starts to set. When applying the smaller detail parts, if you're just using your fingers you do run the risk of getting some poly cement on your fingertips, which can then be transferred to the surface of the model, leaving behind ugly fingerprints. If you have a set of tweezers, these can come in very handy for manoeuvring some of the smaller pieces into position before switching to your fingers just to press them home and reducing the risk of spreading glue into unwanted places. One of the other great benefits to using Humbrol's precision poly cement on this build is the ability to quickly and neatly apply a continuous bead of glue. If you've watched our previous tutorials where we use the kit box applicator setup, you'll know that to apply a continuous bead we often have to make several trips with the applicator between the model and the palette. Using the precision poly cement, we can very quickly and very neatly apply a continuous bead of glue all the way along the parts, and that's cut down the assembly time quite dramatically. Once the upper and lower decks are in position, another glue bead is added along the rear, and the stern of the ship is dropped into place, 
and before the glue bites in, everything's aligned nice and neat. Another glue bead is added to the other half of the hull, and then this is dropped into position to close up the model. This is basically the assembly for the lower portion of the ship completed, but again just make sure that careful alignment is carried out along the stern, so that everything lines through nice and neatly. Moving on to the masts, a small blob of poly cement was added before the crow's nest was slid into position. There's a small notch and tab arrangement on the masts which makes alignment simple as they will only fit one way, and we left clean up of the crow's nest parts until after they were glued to the mast, as this makes holding those detail pieces much easier. To glue the mast to the sails, there's a small groove on each mast which corresponds with a notch on the sails. This maximises the gluing area to make for a stronger joint, and also makes alignment very simple. There are four to assemble, and this was done in a matter of minutes. The last part of the assembly process involved gluing the rudder in position. We applied a few drops of poly cement to the mounting points, and then slid the rudder into place, and made sure that it was aligned nice and straight before the glue cured. Once that glue was allowed to dry fully, the assembly process was complete, and we can move on to painting. We've moved our Humbrol workstation out of the way, as we're going to be spraying the model with Humbrol's acrylic spray primer to prepare the surface for paint. We've put some cardboard down to protect the surfaces from overspray, and if you are lucky enough to be able to spray indoors at home, make sure that you place something onto your work surfaces to protect it from the spray. After mounting the model on some scrap MDF, which has been pushed into one of the mast mounting holes, the model was given light coats of acrylic spray primer from a distance of about 25 centimeters. We tried to avoid pooling the primer on the surface, and we made sure to spray from all the different angles to make sure the whole surface was covered. While the hull's first coat was drying, we switched over to the sails, which again had been mounted on a small piece of scrap wood using some white tack adhesive. Each one of the mast and sail assemblies was given a couple of light coats of primer, and once everything had been painted properly and allowed to dry, we were left with a nice smooth primed surface, which was ready to accept the base coats of acrylic paint. The first areas of the model that we're going to paint are the white areas. Remember that some of these paints could have been sat on the shelf for a while so they may have separated. Before you use them, give them a good stir to get the paint nice and smooth again. After stirring, we transferred some of the white acrylic to our palette, and then we diluted it with ordinary tap water to a ratio of about 60% paint, 40% water. By adding some tap water, this means the paint will settle down smoother on the surface, and we can build up the white paint in several thin layers without adding any three-dimensional texture to the model. Painting with white can be particularly tricky at the best of times, and if you don't have access to Humbrol's spray primer at home when you're trying to build your Mary Rose starter set, then don't worry, as the process remains exactly the same. Simply add diluted layers of white to build up the coverage gradually, and by thinning it down with a little bit of tap water, you don't run the risk of obscuring any of the surface details or creating any unsightly textures. We're using the brush from the starter set to paint these areas of the model, because of the amount of raised details and small nooks and crannies that we need to get the paint into, to make sure that we've got total coverage. While the white paint is drying on the hull of the ship, we've switched to the 7mm Humbrol flat brush, and we've followed the same process with the preparation of our paint, diluting it with about 40% tap water after giving it a good stir. The flat brush allows us to quickly add one large smooth coat of paint over these largely featureless areas, meaning that we're not only painting faster, but the overall application is as smooth as we can get it with a brush. The sails are painted with one coat of paint on the outside and inside faces, making sure to get into all the little nooks and crannies underneath the masts, and then these can be set aside to dry, and we can switch our focus back to the hull again for that second coat of white paint. Switching back to the brush supplied with the starter set, we can mix up another batch of diluted white acrylic, and give all the white areas of the model a second coat. By switching between painting the hull and the sails in this fashion, it gives the paint time to dry fully on the model. This is essential when you're trying to build up coverage in multiple thin layers, as any area which isn't dry properly may be agitated by the brush, causing a three-dimensional texture. After giving all of the white areas of the model a second coat of white paint, 
we can set it aside to dry and switch back to the 7mm flat brush and the tan paint to apply a second coat to the sails. You'll see that the coverage is starting to build up already and we'll simply repeat this process until we've built up a good solid coverage of white and tan paint on the hull and sails. The brown paint supplied with the kit was given a good stir and then again thinned with a bit of tap water. Using the 7mm flat brush we started to apply a nice even base coat working our way up from the bottom of the hull towards the white areas. As we got nearer the white a lot of caution was applied and we stopped short as we wanted to tidy up these areas with the starter set brush and its finer point. It's a lot easier to paint over white paint with brown to tidy up these areas than it is to try and cover up any slips with the brown paint painting white over the top. After allowing that initial coat of brown paint to dry fully we use the 7mm brush to apply a second coat. The brown covers very easily over the primer so this was done very quickly and we were able to move onto the top of the model to start painting the upper decks and all of that anti-boarding netting. There are a lot of recessed details in these areas so it did take a bit of work to make sure that the paint got into all of those holes. As we approach the edges of the upper decks where it meets with the white areas we flipped the brush over onto its side and worked from the inside out as this makes it much more difficult to get any brown paint on those white areas. Once the initial coat on the upper decks was dry we applied a second one again using the same principle with the brush to try and avoid getting any brown paint on the white portions of the ship. The last large surface to cover is the stand and we followed the kit instructions and painted ours brown but if you've got different colours at home you can of course paint the stand whichever colour you choose. With the majority of the large base coats completed it was time to switch over to the starter set brush again and using its finer point pick out all of the masts and any of the other details which need to be wooden on the model. We needed to work carefully in this area as we didn't want to get any brown paint on the sails but by working slowly and carefully and rotating the pieces to get the best angle we were able to block in these details without any mishaps. By taking your time and working with a bit of patience you should be able to get two coats of brown onto these areas and that should give nice solid coverage. Moving back onto the hull with the starter set brush we can now start to tidy up the demarcation line between the brown areas and the white areas using the colour profile on the back of the box as our guide. The trickier areas can be done in one pass by reducing the dilution of the brown paint to about 20% tap water. This gives coverage in one pass rather than trying to build up these very delicate areas with multiple thin coats. This can be a really tricky process particularly if you're a beginner to model painting so if you feel that this is a bit intimidating simply tidy up the line between the white and brown areas and move on to the next step rather than risking all of your hard work so far. To paint the metallic details on the model such as the cannons and the anchor, the dark iron colour supplied with the kit was used. On the cannons these details were painted first from above before flipping the whole model over and painting them again from underneath to ensure that the entire cannon barrel was painted. The last step in the painting process is to reinstate the wooden area between the gun decks. We blocked this whole area in white at the start of the painting process because it's so much easier to paint brown paint over white than vice versa. By leaving this stage until the end we're able to paint a nice crisp line by using the raised detail on the side of the hull as a guide for the brush. This will need to be done twice so work slowly and carefully and you should be able to build up good coverage and reinstate that wooden strip down the side of the ship. If you're a beginner to painting this may be another step that you want to consider skipping as it does risk the white areas that you've painted already but if you take your time and use the detail as a guide you should be able to get that brown strip on without too much hassle. With all the painting complete it was time to apply the markings and we've really got some work to do here as the Tudors certainly like to decorate their ships. These markings aren't stickers so they won't peel away from the backing paper. Instead the selected transfer has to be cut free of the backing sheet using a modelling knife or scissors 
and then taken in tweezers and immersed in water for two or three seconds. This can then be set aside to soak for two or three minutes and this will soften the adhesive on the backing sheet allowing the transfer to slide free under gentle pressure from a paintbrush. You'll know when the marking's ready to apply as it will move freely on the surface of the backing paper and we can pull it to the edge of the sheet allowing a small area to overlap. After applying some water to the surface of the model to help in positioning, the marking can be moved into position and pushed onto the surface with a brush before the backing paper is pulled away. The water that we've applied to the surface of the model will allow it to slide around so we can finalise positioning just using the back of a modelling knife to pull the transfer into place. This can then be allowed to dry and the marking will be applied. The same principle is applied to the smaller details on the sides of the ship. You don't need to worry about getting everything in the perfect place first time as the water that we've applied to the surface of the model will allow for repositioning. Using a combination of the brush and the back of a modelling knife we can gently coax all of the transfers into the correct position and then using a small bit of tissue to wick away the excess water everything should settle down nicely onto the surface of the model. Some of the transfers are designed to align with raised details so take extra care in these areas to make sure that everything's lined up properly before you use the tissue to settle them down. After about an hour's work all of the markings are applied and we can move on to the very last stages of this build which is to apply the flags and pennants. These are provided as printed stickers which do peel away from their backing paper without the need for any water. After removing the sticker from the sheet impart a bit of a curve with your fingers and align the ends of the stickers perfectly together and pinch them with the tweezers. This closed end can then be pushed towards the curved end leaving a small hole through which we're going to slide the mast. These flags can then be slid over the tips of the mast, put into position and then the sticker can be pinched fully closed around the mast to hold it in position. The final step is to glue the masts into place using Humbrol's precision poly cement squirted into the mounting holes. Because there's a small tab on each mast it will only seat in the correct position so alignment isn't a problem and we simply need to glue these pieces into place to complete the model. Once all of the masts are fitted the Mary Rose starter set is finished. We hope you've enjoyed joining us today for our build of the Mary Rose. This is another starter set from Airfix which has been designed from the ground up to have a simplified build sequence and reduced parts count without compromising on detail. This makes the starter sets a perfect way to get into the hobby of scale modelling and we hope that by providing these videos we can give some guidance and inspiration that help newer modellers to get going on their journey into this fascinating hobby. We'd like to thank you for joining us and watching our video today and we hope you'll join us again in the near future as we do more videos of this type. As always, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you again next time.